Maybe on uh, thanks for doing this, first of all. Uh, secondly, everyone's been talking about how great a shape you came into camp. Maybe you could address that, you know, what you weighed in at, how it compared to last year, and just your overall mindset as you get ready for camp. Um, <clears throat> I mean, overall, I feel good. You know, I think uh, I had made a plan. Um, you know, I think like May 30th was the date. I uh, made a plan to where <clears throat> I, I wanted to come in and, and, and lose weight and, and get to my my desire playing weight. This has been the widest I've ever played played in the NFL. And uh, I don't want to say a specific number, but it's in the you know 215, 215 range. I can't or 210, 215 range. I just kind of stay within that range and um, you know, and I feel good. You know, it's been the widest I've been playing since literally high school football. So um, I think. You know, not to say I wasn't like in shape or anything prior to my career, but just compared to how I am now, um, it's not even close. You know, I think um, I kind of like raised the level on my conditioning and um, my shape, shape level. Um, and me being 28 years old, you know, I'm, I'm excited about where I'm at. Le'Veon, what are your expectations for the season for yourself and for the team? Um. You know, obviously for the team, you know, we, we got to go out there and win games. You know, obviously that's everybody's expectations. You know, I see a lot of things, not people like really giving us a chance. And, um, you know, I just try to get the guys to, you know, use that for motivation and help fuel us for the season, you know. And for myself, um, you know, I think this is probably, um, like I said, this has been the best I felt. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to show it. You know, I'm ready to show this is the best Le'Veon Bell that's ever, you know, played in the NFL. Um, I think I've had a lot of, you know, success over the course of my career. Um, and, and that's because I worked hard. You know, I think I worked hard and, um, to help me get to where I was. Um, now it's like, I kind of realized, you know, just over the course of the last six, seven years, um, uh, make a comparison to where I've been working at now. Um, it's not even close. So this year, um, I'm expecting a lot for myself and, um, I hold myself to a high standard, um, and I'm ready to show everybody, you know, uh, what I'm able to do this year. Hey, Levy, on two things. Um, one, you've been you've been posting some stuff on Instagram, which you do, which is always fun. Um, can you talk a little bit about? Is that just kind of a an, an illustration of how stoked you are about what's to come and the kind of shape you've been in during this off season? And then I have a follow up question. Yeah, I mean, I I've been posting because just because I've been having an itch, you know, I've been just trying to like, you know, really show people where I'm at a little bit, just kind of a little excited. Uh, but I, yeah, I definitely don't post nearly of what I not, you know, not close to what I nearly, you know, what I, what I, all the things I do, I've kind of post maybe like 10, 15% of, you know what I'm saying? I don't post nearly of what I do. And just secondly, as a follow, uh, you know, Obviously, you came in. You're not an excuse maker, but you came into last season without having played an entire year prior to that. Now you're you've got last season under your belt. You're in the second season of a, a year of, a, of the same system. You got Frank Gore here, who may be a help as well. Um, do you have any measure in your mind about how much better that's going to has a chance to make you personally, just in terms of you know your production? Yeah, I think um, you know I. Last year when I was coming back off the year off, um, I felt like I was ready. Um, I felt like I was conditioned the season or, you know, I was in good shape for the season and stuff. And um, even when I was playing, I felt good, you know. Um, there was nothing at the time where I was looking back on it like, man, I didn't uh, feel good here. I didn't feel good there. Or um, I felt like I came in at a good weight, things like that. But it's like now sitting here and I look back on it, it's like, dang, I wasn't even close you know, to where I wanted to be. Like, I wasn't – like, if I wanted to take that next step and be, like, a great player, you know, I didn't work nearly hard enough. You know, I didn't – I wasn't, like, you know – a lot of people were kind of, like – I've been hearing – oh, it's been the O-line, like, all, been O-line issues and, like, you know, Coach Gates not giving me the ball or, you know, it's all outside and things like that. And I just kind of look at myself and be like, well, was, was, I, was I really the best that I could be, you know? And um, uh, and I know I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even close, you know what I'm saying? So I think this year is gonna be a lot different in that aspect, just because the fact that I really understand that the past six or seven years I've worked hard and that's why I've been successful, but I haven't worked nearly as hard as I've worked the last six and a half months. 
Le'Veon, how did you get to that point, you know, where, where you've come to that realization where you, you kind of had to step back and look at yourself? What was, you know, how did you come about that? I think uh, it's not something that happened like uh, – it's not something I kind of set my mind to do, but I think I kind of got complacent in my head. You know, you have success for six years in the NFL. You know, you always kind of have some like – I've always had something to kind of drive me to be great, you know? Like, when I was in college, I wanted to get to the NFL, you know what I'm saying? When I was in the NFL, I wanted to get to the best running back in the league. You know, and then when you start hearing, oh, Le'Veon, you're the best running back in the league and things like that, it's not like I stopped working hard, but it's more like, dang, I didn't really have that that edge on me no more, like, that chip for, like, if I was working out, I always work out hard enough to beat the next man. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I'll work out, but like I work out hard enough that everybody in my workout group, I can beat them in my workout. You know what I'm saying? But it's like now, I don't worry about who I'm gonna work out with, like or who's in my workout group. It's like I'm worried, worried about myself. Like how far can I go? Like, like how, how much better can I be? You know what I'm saying? I've never, ever, ever like really took myself to that level to where it's like, dang, like. Like, how much better can I be? You know what I'm saying? I think just me, just over the course of, like, my career, maybe the season last year that I had, reflecting on it, and I'm watching some runs, and I feel like I left some yards out there. You know, and you hear people talk like, oh, maybe it's the O-line or it's the coach, and I give him the ball, but it's like, no. Like, I mean, there was holes there. Like, Coach Gates gave me the ball enough. You know what I'm saying? There's times where, like, I could have done more with it. And um, I just don't want that to be a question no more. Like, when it comes up this year, like, I want everybody to know, like, I'm like the best like condition that I've ever been, and I'll, I'm excited to show it. Like I'm I'm ready. I'm amped to show it. Like I can't wait. Are you coming in this year? Like you're talking about, are you coming in this year with more edge than maybe you've ever had? It's not even close. Not even close. Le'Veon, did you feel like you saw a lot of, uh, or maybe more, even more stacked boxes than you saw in Pittsburgh last? The, than you saw in Pittsburgh, and if so, how do you feel you can overcome that this year? No, I mean, there was nothing stack box or I, I don't know how the stats would look at it. Like, you know, it's always stats or like how much percentage of eight, eight box, man, eight box you'll see or seven box you'll see. The coaches do a good job of putting run plays and pass plays in. So if you, if you got a run play, a lot of times if you're running the design run play, it's a good run play for the desired box. You know where the defense is going to line up in, right? So it comes down to like, all right, you know where the unblocked guy is. Can you make that guy miss and get eight yards or nine yards or 10 yards or break a long run? Or does that guy make a tackle and you get one yard? You know what I'm saying? Everything is really the same. So whether it's the box, seven or six guys in the box or eight guys in the box, everybody's going to have a hat on the hat. So one free guy, you got to make a miss. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Maybe, and if I could just uh, change the subject a little bit, uh, what was your reaction to Jamal getting traded? And based on your tweets afterwards, it almost sounded like you were surprised that it happened. And it almost seemed like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like you were hurt or, or felt betrayed that he left after convincing you to come sign with the Jets. Could you, could you expound on that uh, emotion that you were feeling at the time? At the time? Um, but yeah, me and Jamal, we just kind of had a conversation. I'm on the phone and um, I just felt like, uh, you know, when I came here, um, he kind of like was a, a value or a big piece of like why I came here in the first place. He kind of like me and him was talking, blase, blase, which, you know, I'm not, you know, making it, you know, making it seem like it's his fault that I came here or nothing. I'm just saying like, uh, I just thought it was kind of a bigger picture. Me and him had a, you know, an understanding like, what we plan to do, like, okay, I'm going to come here, you know, it's been some losing seasons, you know, we're going to try to, like, turn this thing around. Um, we do this, that, and the other. Um, so if you tell me one thing, then, you know, obviously, you you know, I guess he, it, it kind of looked like he kind of forced his way out doing all the things on social media and things like that. And I was talking to him, and um, he was telling me that he wasn't going to try to force his way out and do things like that. So um, I'm not really – you know, I'm not upset with Jamal. Like, I, I want the best for Jamal. Like, Jamal is a great player. Like, there's nothing, you know, you could take a, take away from that. Like, he's a great special player on the field. Um, and I love playing with him. He's a great he's a great teammate, too. Uh, I just, you know, sometimes 
you don't like the way people handle things and, you know, um, just ways I handle things that people ain't like. You know what I'm saying? So um, I want the best for Jamal, regardless. He's in Seattle right now. Um, and we're going to play him. You know, he already made the tweet about week 14. When he see me, and it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be fun when we play. Um, but I want the best for him. I want him to have a great season. Uh, and then when we play, you know, we're going to play. But I'm not about to sit here and keep talking about Jamal. You know what I mean? I wish for the best for him, you know, but um, I'm going to worry about the guys that's here. You know, we got Bradley McDougal now. He's from Columbus, Ohio. You know, same same place where I'm from. So I'm glad that he's here. You know, that's what I want to talk about. Lavion, what has your reaction been to, you know, some of the allegations levied toward Woody Johnson in terms of uh, comments where he's making sexist remarks, racist remarks? What has your reaction been to all of that? Um, yeah, obviously I've heard, um, I read about it and things like that. Um, I think I heard he, like, denied it. Um, me personally, I don't know him. You know, I know Christopher um, Johnson and, um, you know, Woody, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not familiar. I don't, you know, I don't know him. So I, I can't really make a judgment off of, you know, what's said or what's not said. He denied it. You know, I just kind of, you know, go off of what I know and the people I know and judge the people I know. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really um, try to get too much into it and reading about things like that. Um, I just try to, Stay balanced. I'll never get too high or too low. I know you just got on the field for the first time today. What? How do you see uh, Sam? Uh, you see any difference in Sam from uh, this year? This year to la from last year? I do. I do. Uh, Sam is a lot more comfortable, and you can tell just by the way he's talking to guys. It's not more. It's it's more of a a sternness to him. You know, it's not more of like he's saying it. It's not. You know, he's like stern with the guys now because he's like. All right, guys, we got to get this thing going. You know, he he feeling a lot more comfortable. He knows, what's, you know, he can hold guys accountable because he's not going to mess up. Um, you know, even with Coach Gates, you know, if Coach Gates, you know, he may call something and Sam correctly him now. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Sam will get to that point where he's really starting to understand um, the offense, and it's going to be fun. You know, I, I I'm excited, bro. Like I said, I've been saying it last year. You know, it was like a first, you know, first year kind of getting to it. It's going to take patience, but like I think, you know. I just remember going through the walkthroughs last year versus this year. It's literally like night and day, you know, with Sam. You know what I'm saying? He, he clicking. We'll take a few more for Le'Veon. Le'Veon, uh, when, when you do lose a player like Jamal out of the locker room, is there any kind of locker room void or leadership void that needs to be filled either by you or somebody else? Um, yeah, I think that kind of happens naturally. You know, um, I think – I, I, right now it's kind of like split up and I don't know how the defense really practicing, but I'm pretty sure there's guys out there who's probably taking that role that Jamal would have kind of had. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure who it is right now. That guy kind of emerged itself, I think, once the kind of season goes on. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be – it may take a collection of guys. You know what I'm saying? It may not just be one guy. You know what I'm saying? It may take a collection of guys because uh, CJ, um, he's not playing either. So, it's going to be, you know what I'm saying, like a collection of guys and, you know, even myself, I'm going to try my best, you know, challenge the defense and get guys going. You know, like I said, I talk to, you know, Brad all the time. He's a guy that I I grew up with and know. And, um, and I let him know, like, it's going to be a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like, football is not, you know, it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? And if people understand that, that it's not easy and embrace it, you know, embrace the hard work and, and the time and effort that it takes, you know, that's what makes the game fun. Le'Veon, um, there's been a lot of speculation going back to last year about your relationship with Coach Gase. And that's, you know, that kind of came up at the end of last year with what he said uh, when the season wrapped up about you being under contract. It's also been talked about after Jamal said what he said a few weeks ago. Just for you, you know, could you just clear up for us, you know, how do you feel about Coach Gase? How do you feel about him as a leader? And what's your what's your relationship like between the two of you? Yeah, I, I, like, I love Coach Gase. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand why the – the allegations is with me and Coach Gates. Like, me and Coach Gates, are, we get along fine. You know, I think last year was just – we still with, – with the offense, we're still, like, figuring out what we like. Like, what he does and what I do, you know, we have a lot of, you know, injuries and O-line issues and, you know, guys shifting in and out. So, it was tough for the, the whole entire offense, you know what I'm saying? And uh, me and him never, like, fell out or had any arguments or bad talks, you know what I'm saying? I think – every talk we had kind of been positive and moving in the right direction. You know, I, you know, in Coach Gates, he's more of like a 
he's like a chill coach, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, at halftime, he's not going to come in like rah, rah. You know what I'm saying? He's he going to go in and he's going to just kind of find the adjustments. Like, he, he calling the plays. Like he's the guy who's calling the plays. So like, he instantly goes to his – to his thing, he's like making adjustments. Like that's like the first thing I watch him do. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? As a defensive player, they may not understand it. You know what I'm saying? They may, you know, Coach Coach Williams is way different than Adam Gates. Coach Williams is like he gonna get into you, kind of yells, and you know what I'm saying. So they're just like two different coaches. You know, um, me personally, I, it didn't bother me. It don't bother me if he, you know, because I understand what he's doing. He's just trying to get the offense together. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of stuff on his plate. He's the head coach. And he's calling you know, plays. So he has to make the adjustments with what the defense is doing. And then you got to come talk to the team, get everybody prepared. So it's a lot of stuff. So I'm not about to sit here and, and, and be upset because he's not talking to me each and every five seconds. Like, you know what I'm saying? I understand you got a lot going on. I got a lot going on, you know? So um, it is what it is. And, you know, I think he's a, I think he's a good leader for us. You know, I think he can get it, get it done. If that's what y'all asking me. Yeah. Le'Veon, how, how did you feel – two quick questions for you. How did you feel about the way you were used last year and also completely separate? How much Warzone have you been playing lately? How much what? Warzone. <laughs> I haven't really been playing no – I haven't played no Warzone last year. Like, the last two months, I've been doing a lot of training. But uh, I think last year um, – like, I, I don't like making excuses. So, like, everybody just, you know, trying to make the excuse for, like, the old line – or like Coach Gates not giving me the ball or whatever. I'm saying it was me. Like I wasn't nearly what I should have been. Like I understand like, you know, it been maybe in some runs where like it may have been no chance, but there's a lot of runs where I had chances, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't make the play. So I can't let that duplicate this year. Like I can't let that happen.